In order to make perfect scrambled eggs, we must understand the four variables that control the final product. And namely, these are the egg temperature, how heat was applied, how much they were agitated, and the added ingredients. Today, I wanna to cover these four variables and additionally go over some unique scrambled egg preparations from around the world to help you create your perfect scrambled egg at home. Let's break it down. From high heat to low heat, from big curds to really small curds, there is not a single dish that is as readily and drastically transformed as scrambled eggs are, depending on how we cook them. And the three defining characteristics, in my opinion, are really just the curd size, the tenderness of the curd, and the moistness overall. And for definitions up front here, curd size refers to the size of the coagulated egg protein, so really small curds like in a French style scramble, or the large curds of a Cantonese scramble. Now, tenderness refers to how tightly the egg proteins have bonded to each other. So for example, an egg cooked without salt on really high heat for a long time is gonna have a tighter protein bond than one that was cooked at low heat over low and slow with some butter added. Now, moistness refers to the water content. For example, higher heat likely means more water has evaporated and you're gonna have some drier eggs compared to the low and slow version. Now, these three characteristics are really controlled by those four things I mentioned earlier. The temperature of the eggs, how heat was applied, how much they were agitated, and finally, those added ingredients. Let me explain. So up front on this section, the temperature, how heat is applied, and how much agitation are really the key things to understand and master. In most cases, your added ingredients are gonna increase the margin for error based on the outcome. And you know, it seems like all the videos or recipes touting the best scrambled eggs always have a ton of cream or like half a stick of butter in them. And obviously that's gonna taste good, but can you make a beautiful soft scrambled egg that is tender, creamy, and moist that only uses like a tablespoon of butter? If you understand temperature, heat, and agitation, you can. So let's hop in. So the first key thing to remember is that egg proteins coagulate due to heat, and there are a ton of different temperatures where that begins to happen for the specific proteins in the egg. But for our scrambled eggs, the big one to know is that when mixed together, the whole egg is gonna set at roughly around 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 73 degrees Celsius. And as Harold McGee notes in On Food and Cooking, for tender and succulent results, egg dishes should be cooked only just to the temperature at which their proteins coagulate, which is always well below the boiling point. So this is cool and all, but how exactly does heat solidify a liquid egg? So again, as mentioned in On Food and Cooking, Egg proteins start as folded chains of amino acids, and when heat is applied, those chains unfold first, and then they begin to bond to each other, resulting in that continuous network of long molecules, which is our egg curd. Now, another important thing to note is that a whole egg is typically made up of around 74% water, 13% protein, 11% fat, and then 1% minerals. And specifically, that water is the one we need to be wary of. If the eggs are overcooked, the proteins are gonna bond exclusively to each other and it squeezes or pushes the water out of the protein network. This is what results in those weepy, watery eggs you get at most continental hotel breakfasts. Now you do you at the end of the day, but for most, I think we are looking to create a two-phase system scrambled egg where the water content is evenly dispersed and trapped between the tender set curds, which creates a sauce-like moistness that has a much desirable mouthfeel. So the temperatures are great, but we also have to understand how the heat was applied to raise the scrambled eggs to those temperatures. For example, should I use a really hot pan or a really cold one? So up front here, I recommend cooking scrambled eggs low and slow. Specifically, you probably want a pan that's below or around the boiling point of 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Why? Well, it gives you the greatest margin for error. Let's look at some boiled eggs to explain. So this is a photo that Kenji Lopez Alt shared with me from his book, The Food Lab, and it showcases all the times for boiled eggs. And since these are in water instead of a dry pan, they physically cannot be cooked at hotter than 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And because they are in the shell, the heat moves from the exterior to the whites and then to the yolks. And we can see that there are all these small increments and in changes within just 30 seconds. At above 10 minutes or so, the boiled eggs are pretty much completely hard and cooked to solid. However, both of those middle rows give us a wide range of possibilities that would be perfect for scrambled eggs. Now, when making scrambled eggs, we have to understand that there's a ton of surface area on the pan so that heat is gonna rapidly transfer once we drop the eggs in. You know, if I drop them into a 350 or 400 degree pan, the egg proteins unwind and bond immediately. 
but if I say drop it in a 212 degree pan or lower, I'll have a couple of minutes to dial in the consistency I want, or in the case of French style scrambled eggs, with a residual heat, you'll have about 15 to 20 minutes or more. Now, the obvious next question is, how do I regulate the temperature of my pan without a thermometer? Easy, just use butter or water in the pan. So butter is about 16% water. So if you see it rapidly bubbling, that means your pan is evaporating the water and it is much likely hotter than it needs to be. Instead, if your butter has not started bubbling, the temp is lower and much more ideal for a slow cooked soft scrambled egg. It's the same exact idea with adding water to the pan. As Kenji showed in a recent video, just add some water to the pan and when it starts to bubble, as long as that hasn't fully evaporated, the surface temperature of the pan is gonna be roughly around the boiling point or maybe slightly higher. So with egg temperature and how heat is applied covered, let's quickly touch on agitation. This is pretty self-explanatory. Basically, the more agitation, while enough heat is being applied to actually set the curds, the smaller the curds will be, and we'll showcase these in some different preparations later in the video. Okay, before added ingredients, here's a couple of the key takeaways on these three variables. So one, for tender eggs, cook them just to the temperature when the egg proteins start to coagulate. Two, applying too much heat will cause the proteins to bond too exclusively to each other, which forms hard curds and squeezes the water out. Three, cook the eggs on a pan around the boiling point of water and use water or butter to help regulate that pan temperature. And then four, more agitation while enough heat is applied means smaller curds. So remember, the temperature, the heat, and the agitation are the big ones to understand first, but let's quickly run through added ingredients. From butter to cornstarch to salt to milk, there are tons of things that people add to their scrambled eggs. And in most cases, what these do are increase the room for air and help you control the outcome. And in general, I kind of put these into three categories. One is diluters, two is tenderizers, and three is emulsification stabilizers. So moist eggs, as we know, are a result of still having enough water molecules in and around the bonded egg proteins. So adding things like milk, cream, butter, are all ways to put more water or fat molecules in between the egg proteins so that when they unfold and bond, that meshwork is gonna be more open and give you a different mouthfeel. Now, Daniel Gritzer has a great article on Serious Eat with a bunch of different tests he did, and in general, he found that the more fat means richer and firmer egg curds, and on the other hand, more liquid via water or milk means more moisture and lighter egg curds. Now, tenderizers, on the other hand, are typically in the form of adding salt or an acid like vinegar, which actually helps the proteins in the egg bond before they even start to unwind. So as Harold McGee notes, in both cases, the proteins no longer repel each other as strongly and therefore approach each other and bond together earlier in the cooking and unfolding process, when they're still mostly balled up so they can't intertwine and bond with each other as tightly. So since the eggs don't bond as tightly, they actually end up more tender when pre-salted or you have added vinegar to them. Then thirdly, we have the emulsification stabilizers. So remember how water can be squeezed out of scrambled eggs if they're overcooked? Well, things like corn or potato starches are gonna help thicken up that water, which actually creates a cohesive sauce-like scrambled egg. And this is really where you're gonna have to experiment with yourself on adding milk, salt, or starches, or maybe some vinegar to make your perfect egg. But now that we have all kind of the tools in our tool belt, it's time to put some of this theory to the test with three unique preparations, soft scrambled, French style, and Cantonese style scrambled eggs. Soft scrambled eggs are one of my favorites and they're typically the ones that I make at home just because they're quick and give you a really nice final product. So to start, add four eggs to a bowl along with a pinch of salt and just vigorously whisk that together. Then set a pan over medium or low heat and drop the butter into the cold pan. I like to swirl the butter once to coat the pan and ensure it's not bubbling or else it's likely too hot. Then just pour in the eggs and you're gonna stir slowly while the curds start to set. It may take a couple of minutes. And again, you just wanna stir more for smaller curds or less for slightly bigger ones. I typically like a medium-ish curd. Then just before they reach my preferred level of doneness, I take the pan off the heat and let that residual heat kind of bring them to where I want them. And again, you could always toss the pan back on if they're not getting there. Then you just layer the eggs out onto a plate and I like hitting them with a couple cranks of black pepper and some fresh chives. And this is easily one of my favorites. It's nice and creamy, it's tender, it's soft and moist. But now let's move to an even smaller curd and lower heat with French style, which I think yields the best overall product they just are kind of a pain in the ass to make. 
To start, place a sauce pot with about an inch or two of water over medium heat. Then once that has come to a boil, just set a bowl over the top and crack in your eggs, along with a pinch of salt, and vigorously whisk that together until it's cohesive. Now, very slowly, that steam is gonna raise the temperature of the bowl and in turn the eggs, and everything will start to thicken a bit. And when it has kind of come up to temperature a little bit, I like to toss in the butter, just so that melts a little bit faster than adding it in the beginning. And then very, very slowly, you're gonna stir the eggs with a spatula or a whisk, and tiny little curds will start to form, but it's gonna probably take at least 15 or so minutes. Now, after painstakingly babying these things, you're gonna end up with this texture that's almost custard-like, and it's truly incredible. These are best served over toast with some chives on top, and they are absolutely luxurious. I think these make the single best scrambled egg, except they're just kind of a pain in the ass to make. But now let's head to the other end of the spectrum with a hot and fast cooking version. So this is a Cantonese scramble based on Chinese cooking demystifieds video, and probably check their method out since they are much better at the technique than I am, but this one has large swath of egg curds mixed with some less cooked parts. So to start, separate the eggs from the whites, then you're going to whip up the whites and whip them together with the yolks afterwards. Additionally, there are a number of added ingredients for this one from salt, sugar, pepper, wine, and some cornstarch slurry, and again these kind of help season the dish but also give you a little bit room for air. So once you have whipped them again, you're gonna set a wok over high heat with lard or oil, and then pour the eggs in. These are gonna bubble and set almost immediately, so we swirl the cooked egg from the bottom to the top and let the uncooked eggs go to the bottom of the pan, and then just kinda of continue that swirling motion until we have large egg curds throughout, and this is only gonna take about two minutes or so. To serve, I love hitting these with some chili flake and scallion, and as we can see, you get these really large egg curds. It's another very unique experience, and there's no other dish quite like scrambled eggs.